Welcome everyone, this is Kevin from Magnet. The next couple of minutes we're going to talk about the ways to track productivity within the lab. Lab work within Atlas uh, starts at the case level. We make cases, we add evidence to those cases, maintain chain of custodies, and at some point examine the appropriate evidence when necessary. Some of the new features just added to Atlas will give you more visibility in, into all the different activities that are going on within a case. As part of that, in, when we have cases uh, like this, this is the working folder of an investigation. We add evidence to those cases. That's what is in the, the evidence locker, so to speak, or the evidence store. Uh, at the appropriate time, you can move those things to do the chain of custody. That's the evidence log in Atlas. And then at the appropriate time, you do examinations. This, these are the bench notes. The evidence items themselves are literally the property sheet of evidence as it sits in Atlas. The examinations, those could be considered the examiner's bench notes. With that in mind, when we take notes in Atlas, it's a very simple process of you launch the note modal, which is that's what this is. The uh, action is really the class of the note. So we're uh, simulating making a examination notation. The list of potential classes of this note, the actions as we're calling them here, well, this is a list that the users create in setting. The executive users in setting create any of the lists. Uh, some are taxonomies, which are filters. Some are just basic drop-down lists like these ones we're discussing now. Either way, the customization of these lists all lie within the users of the system. So back over to the note. When we're creating notes, we are creating the ability to then measure how many of those similar activities did we have over time and by which users and those sorts of things. That's what goes into the activity charting. It all starts right from taking notes. This would be the note model we would use to record the examiner's bench notes as the work is being done in real time, I should say. The, so in this, uh, in this example, you could pick any of these terms. I'm just picking one out. Uh, there's example text here, and which would be the examiner's notes. And then at the bottom down here, you have the ability to apply time to it. If you, if you did a start and a finish, uh, like an imaging session, uh, the Atlas would determine how long that took itself and put that amount of time in the activity. It, you can override that by just putting the actual duration. You can override that calculation instead. And then if there needs to be tracking from a billable standpoint, you can determine that it is a billable uh, action within these notes. And you can put uh, rates and hours associated to those. You can put the billable rate that is associated to the start and end of the event and it'll apply the rate to it. Or you can just put how much it is that the uh, exercise should be billed for as an accounts receivable sort of notation. And these can be converted directly over to an expense report if one exists already on the case. This would become a line item on that case if it were chosen to be a billable note in this sense. So that's the process of creating notes. That's where these durations come from. That is where these actions come from, which takes us to then, how are we measuring these things? So not only can you get statistics by filtering the, the cases and the types of cases over time and all those sorts of things the way you always could in Atlas, but recent additions to Atlas allows you to measure also the individual activities within those cases. So in this example, we would have a choice of any of the actions that you've seen uh, that the user creates. There are some that the system creates itself, such as uh, anything that's created, anything that gets assigned would be a case gets assigned, uh, anything gets approved, any of the documents have an approval in the QA portion, and then when cases get closed, all of these are system generated events. The other ones, they're all user-generated events. So you get to name these, create what you want to track metrics for, and that's where all these terms come from. So customization uh, is up front for the customer to be able to use the terminology they wish and then measure those terms. For just this example, what I'm going to do is I'm only, only going to pick, uh, say, create it to give us an example of what are we measuring. We're measuring 
anything that was created over a period of time by any of the users is what we're looking at in this particular chart, but you don't have to look at it that way. You certainly can focus in on how many cases did we create over a period of time and you determine and define those periods of time. You could do employee review by choosing a single employee rather than all of the employees uh, like this example here. Uh, but that's what you have the ability to do is use any of the terms that you use and measure them any way you wish over time. That's what is producing this chart. Also that's new, you have, you've got some summary information to tell you that really the summary really goes with the chart to show you what's plotted there. But you also now have the ability to create tables which you can export in case you want to do presentation outside of the system. You have the ability, and this would be an example of when when you would want to probably use all of the available actions because what this is going to do is this is going to fulfill both of your tables either of them you could uh, export for further analysis but this gives you the ability to have them all and then filter them any way that you want uh, externally to atlas if you wish to do so the other views that you can do uh, with the activities is now you could compare so we could compare the same thing over time periods for different years, let's say all the cases created last year compared to all the cases created this year or a particular quarter in a different year or the last quarter to this quarter, all those sorts of things. Or like this example, you don't necessarily have to compare the same. In the left panel, we're comparing cases that were created over a year and on the right panel, we're looking at items that were created over that same period of time. So you can create comparisons as you wish uh, and you can also export that information just like you could in the single chart view uh, we saw previously. So the activity metrics are meant to enhance the regular case stats and exam stats that you've always been able to produce in Atlas. This is an example of what you already have been able to produce by just measuring the amount of cases, what types are they, who's requested them. That is what uh, the regular stats, the regular filtered stats would show. The filters are, are created by the end users as well. So you can filter by topic, which would be like these case types. These are just examples like placeholder type terms. Those would all be terms that you've created. Uh, you would be able to sort on any one of those, or since I didn't sort on one, I can see all of those to show the current statuses of all the cases that met a particular criteria. Uh, I don't think I filtered by anything to get these examples, but oftentimes you would filter by time or by topic to get then the cases related to that, their current statuses, what types are they, origins in Atlas are who requested these cases, and where are they located, and then the generic case tags. You can apply those to any case to get even more uh, ability to segregate stats out from other of similar types, origins, all those sorts of things. They are just merely filters, but they are also an aggregation uh, of statistics based on the count of those applied filters. The other things you've had uh, is the ability to see other form-based statistics that go along with the activities, any assessments that were in those cases, total evidence in those cases, including the current backlog of evidence items within those things and the exam stats are the exams the bench notes we were discussing earlier uh, these would be the same as far as measuring what types of exams how many uh, what types of a what types of devices are being looked at and then it gets into more detail with the actual devices themselves the mobile internal devices external devices these come directly from the exam stats so where Whatever you put in there as far as account and capacity, you'll see it averaged back to you in the statistics themselves. And just like the filter stats, you would still also have the metrics from the home page, which they tell a little different story and they show inflows and outflows of work uh, over time as well. That's what the trend line and its accompanying table uh, would describe. The other charts uh, show the current backlog of any evidence we have in open status cases that don't currently have an examination associated to them. They, pop, they populate the backlog on the metrics page, the current status of all my open cases, and then the circular charts 
These tell other things such as how many cases are each of the team members currently assigned to as the lead examiner, uh, what types of cases do we have in our open status cases, and again, all of the terms. These are terms that the users would have created. So whatever terminology you use now, you'll continue to do so. That's what populates these charts. The uh, origins and locations mean exactly the same thing as they did in the filtered stats. These just relate solely to open status cases. The, uh, with any of these charts in your metrics, you can always see the details of them. So just like the leader chart shows how many cases each of the members, each of the team members are currently assigned to as the lead examiner, it also shows you how many cases aren't assigned to anyone. So in fact, that chart has a dual purpose. It is also the backlog of cases uh, which are yet to be assigned. Thank you for watching our video. If we can provide you any information, please contact us at sales at magnetforensics.com.